For the past 20 years, I have performed, taught, and lived under the influence of the universal maxim of improvisational acting. Yes, and. The brilliantly simple technique combines affirmation, new information, and action to make an improv scene succeed or, if you will, soar. And anyone can learn it. Say two improvers are on loan on stage. No script, no teleprompter, just the performers in the bare stage. One might say to the other, Batman, jump in the Batmobile. The second performer can either affirm, yes and, his partner, and add information, yes, I'm right behind you, Robin. Or they could negate the partner. I'm not Batman, I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> yes and drives the scene forward. Negation stops the momentum flat. Every improver in such a situation would make a different choice. But the key is to embrace the suggestion and prop propel the scenario. Many improv students go on to perform but most choose other pursuits, never to do an official improv scene again. Nonetheless, the golden yes and leaves a permanent light on, illuminating our dreams, our attitudes, and our relationships. Great teachers, directors, salespeople, coaches, and communicators intuitively use yes and. William Ball, the famed stage director and founder of the American Conservatory Theater and author of A Sense of Direction, chose to embrace his actor's first three intuitive choices. The first and second time he affirmed their choices, no matter how clumsy or mediocre, but by the third choice, then his trust in their intuition reached their little genius, compelling them to use their A material. When we enter a store and the sales clerk comments, great hat, or I love your haircut, we know we're hearing a sales shtick, but we still appreciate the compliment. Affirmation helps people thrive, especially when the world can put you down, cut you off, and string you up in a tidy, appropriate box. Yes, and, as is an incredible tool for life. Some folks have yes and down exceptionally well at work, at play, on stage, but when following their heart's true desire, they're suspended in limbo, holding true intimacy and authenticity at arm's length. They have a difficult time with no. <laughs> when we can't say no, we fear that anyone, particularly the stronger willed, will invade our psychic and physical space and take our lives over and rule us. When we can't say no to such external and internal forces, we stay sadly on the outside looking in, living life at a distance rather than taking a stand and facing the real or imagined conflict. When we learn to say no and defend it, others must listen whether or not they like it, and usually they don't. Once we can say no to seemingly overwhelming powers, an overbearing parent, a critical spouse, a manipulative boss, a needy friend, a self-defeating inner critic, we claim, define, and protect our safe boundary, making us stronger, clean, and clear. In my life, I've found you can't really say yes until you can say no. With the power of no, we can choose whether to accept, accept the behavior of that parent, spouse, boss, or teacher. We claim our power. Someone else can no longer take over. We can say no to family obligation mania, hurtful criticism, obsessive togetherness, and self-inflicted fear. And with no in our tool, tool belt, we can say yes to what we truly want. Life is a balance, a la hot and cold, night and day, 
yin and yang. We need yes and we need no. And then we need yes again. This essay was published in the Columbus Dispatch and I will leave the link in the comments. Thanks.